Okay, so yes, let me let me try to give you again an introduction to this. The idea was to try to summarize some of the, the main concepts. Um, <clears throat> so ideally, we will meet today and we will meet uh, in the next week. If you think it, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was good, let's say. Today, uh, we will go through some of these concepts. Um, once again, any question, please just ask me the worst that can happen is I tell you, um, I don't know, but I will look for, for the answer and send it to you later. Um, I made some a little arrangement of this, the titles are here, but essentially the same that you saw in the uh, in the different emails. Um, the same here. So um, let me start with, uh, I think the, the most important part of all this is essentially that is the, the blockchain technology, because this will help us a lot to understand many of the other things, many of the difference between different uh, different currencies uh, and um, and what they this uh, the way that they work and uh, why that's important and why that is useful. So, so essentially, uh, don't worry, it will be not a lot of tests, but this is like at the beginning. So one of the things that the summary, let's say that uh, I took from several articles, et cetera, is essentially that as the world that we are living right now, we have all these different transactions, all these different exchanges, essentially, of, of, of stuff or of information. I usually they have to pass through to several uh, intermediaries in order to do this, uh, especially when talking about money, you know, when we have to interact with money and other people. And usually these things uh, are difficult to be 100% reliable. The promise, let's say, of the blockchain of, of solving this problem. So technology behind the Bitcoin that is called blockchain, the idea is first that will be an open, so open source. So in the sense that uh, there is no a secret how it works. Uh, for whoever wants to 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 study, let's say, and 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 it's how you can find it on internet. Basically, it's also distributed in the sense that uh, there is no a single entity that management uh, that manage this kind of infrastructure. This is not only good in terms of the democracy of the the system, but also in the reliability of the system, and essentially also the safety of this. You no, know? so one of the the many things I will talk here uh, will be more or less related to to the to the markets because it's what uh, is what you will hear more uh, you are already hearing on the news essentially uh blockchains and, and the market but it's important to to mention that these things will be very useful not only for interaction in terms of money but also in terms of goods and once again in terms of information that need to be recorded uh, in, a, in a safe way okay and one of the things, at least this is why I made this proposal, because to, the, to this group is essentially because the adoption of this kind of technologies is something that will happen anyway in, in different forms, maybe not as right now in terms of, of the Bitcoins and Ethereum, and we will talk a little bit about that. But in terms of essentially how um, different things, I put it here, will be dealt with uh, in terms of um, commerce, in terms of once again, how the people save information in a, in a world that will be very different than what we have now. Maybe not so much for us, but very much probably for, for our children, basically. So <clears throat> I, I, I will use my earphone after this, but I wanted to show you a little uh, short video. It's two minutes uh, for the World Economic Forum and of the view of the blockchain. I think it's a nice summary. And from there, I can continue talking. Uh, it's already old, in especially in terms of the Bitcoins and technology is five years old, so it's, it's almost a century, but it's still very much valid. So um, I will play it, but please let me know if you don't hear it. Modern technology allows people to communicate directly. Voice and video calls, emails, pictures and instant messages travel directly from A to B, maintaining trust between individuals no matter how far apart they are. When it comes to money, people have to trust a third party to be able to complete a transaction. Blockchain technology is challenging the status quo in a radical way. By using math and cryptography, blockchain provides an open, decentralized database of any transaction involving value, money, goods, property, work, or even votes, creating a record whose authenticity can be verified by the entire community. The future global economy will move towards one of distributed property and trust, where anyone with access to the internet can get involved in blockchain-based transactions, and third-party trust organizations may no longer be necessary. The uses of blockchain technology are endless. 
some expect that in less than 10 years, it will be used to collect taxes. It will make it easier for immigrants to send money back to countries where access to financial institutions is limited. Financial fraud will be significantly reduced, as every transaction will be recorded on a public and distributed ledger, which will be accessible by anyone who has an internet connection. Think of it as wills and contracts that execute themselves or dated proof of existence for ideas, much like a patent. Blockchain will become a global, decentralized source of trust, but not everyone is ready to embrace it. A huge proportion of trust services from banking to notaries will face challenges on price, volume, and in some cases, their very survival. Public authorities could find it more and more difficult to enforce traditional financial regulations due to the new possibilities offered by the Bitcoin network to bypass traditional financial intermediaries. Unimagined new networks will evolve to meet society's needs more cheaply and potentially more securely. Will governments, financial and legal institutions embrace blockchain? What will happen to the ones who don't? So, yes, again, um, the idea in general is how this will be impacted, let's say many, or it's already impacted many industries and many, many different ways to interact with, uh, with money, basically. So I will go through some of these points. I will obviously not bore you with many of the details, but I think it's, uh, will be once again very very important especially uh, if we meet again in the next week um but so of the, the key point here is that um in terms of the blockchain you can imagine this as a as a distributed database so essentially distributed means that we leave all of the records so all the information that the database has is replicated in many places at the same time that's that's uh, that's very important because in this case no single entity have control of all the data so it's uh, if one of these nodes, as you can imagine in this picture on the on the right, disappear, the information is still replicated in many places. So if you really, uh, uh, let's say, in order to damage this kind of the network, you really have to go through many nodes to to lose the information. So this is very 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 important in terms of the of the blockchain. Other thing that is very important is everybody knows what everybody is doing. You know, so the, the transactions are verified for everybody. This made the system very, very secure in terms of that that there is no way or to be very precise because this say a lot in, in the news, but it's it's very difficult technologically to hack a blockchain. It's, it's, it's a, you have to have a lot of power uh, the, in order to do something like that. So it's it's so so difficult that it's essentially much easier just simply be part of the network and try to break it. And if you have uh, an information, uh, sorry, a network like this one, when uh, once again, everybody knows what everybody's doing uh, in a single moment, and also the history of all these different uh, movement, transactions, sorry, there is no need for intermediaries. So it's no need to, to have a, a three party to trust between two people or two teams that want to interact, it essentially happens without this, uh, this intermediary. So that's that's very very important and from my point of view very cool also because allows the peer to peer transaction so essentially means that again talking about this um, cryptocurrency but you can imagine also other things like uh, information once again um, they can be sent or exchanged between two people and two machines also that's very important uh, without the need of a central node so it's not like a, right now it happened with the banks that, or when I pay something in, using PayPal or something similar that go through this system, go through them, they verify that I really have the money so I, they can subtract it from my account and put it, by, uh, sorry, plus in the account that I'm sending to. So in this case, we don't need any more this kind of, of intermediaries. And that's obviously um, a very um, shocking event if we talk about the traditional way to, to deal with, with money transfer, for example. No? The other thing that um, is very important, as I mentioned also before, is that it's transparency in the sense that everybody can see what is happening, yes? But it's also, uh, there is a level of uh, anonymity here. So essentially the people can know what accounts are doing, but who in terms of the person, this is totally um, um, disentangled from the, from the network. So essentially what I mean to say is that you can be very anonymous in this kind of, of network. Obviously, this has advantage uh, and disadvantage for many for many point of view. But let's say, in the more idealistic way, essentially means that when you are part of blockchain or, or you have a wallet, that again we will talk next week if we meet, and um, there, 
you are attached to a number. So you have an, a, a unique number attached to that wallet, attached to your, your account, let's call it like this, no? But there is no way to track that account to the user or to the final uh, uh, owner, unless that person uh, reveals to the network or the part of the network who, who she is or who he is, okay? So that's very important because still you can see all what the network is doing, but at the same time, uh, the individual's account cannot link to a, a person. So once again, you can imagine very good things about this in terms of, um, you know, keep, keep secret for some people who are in maybe knowing the best places on the world to live and where this kind of information can, can, be, can be damaging for them, but also obviously can be used in, in another way. So people that can hide uh, or from, from, from maybe no legal activities. But that, uh, once again, that's one of the properties of this kind of, of technology. One of the, also that is very important is the, the irreversibility of the record. So once again, one, one of these transactions enter into the network, all the different uh, computers, let's say, that are part of this network will check what is the transaction. And this, this transaction should happen. What I mean is if I really have that amount of coins that I want to send to somebody, so it need to be a check before, but it's done by the entire network. So essentially what you will a word that maybe you heard before that is called consensus. There is a consensus that, that on the network that that transaction is okay and should happen. So that's, once again, it's not a single entity who say yes or no, but um, in this case, millions of computers almost. So there is no way to, once again, to falsify one of these transactions. And once again, the, and the word chain here come for the fact that this information is saved in blocks, in this kind of database, and put one after the other, okay? And I'm saving uh, from the very beginning to right now. So all the information is, uh, is saved into, the, into this system. Why this is important? Because imagine that somebody will say, okay, uh, you can uh, think about somebody writing tra transactions there, you know, a fake transaction, maybe try to uh, move money that didn't exist to his account, yes? The detail is that in order to do something like that, you cannot, you don't need only to change one of these blocks. You need to change all the blocks in all the computers at the same time. So this is technologically right now, uh, virtually impossible to do. And this is why um, right now between the, in, for example, in the, in the Bitcoin uh, network, that is one of these network from 2008 that they start to run to now, there have been no any single, uh, fake transaction. And that's, that's, um, that's very powerful in terms of uh, comparing, for example, for the traditional banking system, just to give you an idea of how, how powerful this can be. No? Um, and the last property here that I want to highlight is the, what they call computational logic. So in the, in the most simple terms is essentially, what it means is that you can ask to the network to do, to do some transactions, to send some, for example, coins to A, from A to B, if certain conditions uh, are met. So you can imagine very easily here, a lot of potential to do what the people call on, once again on TV, programmable money. So essentially means that you can write a contract on the computers. And if that condition of the contract are, are fulfilled, the, the transfer will happen no matter what. And once again, this is very, very powerful. You can imagine, for example, uh, applications in, in many, many areas. And then we'll go a little bit about this after, but like uh, insurance or, or even um, some kind of a stock market where once again, once the conditions are met, the network will execute the payment when, in, no matter what, it's, uh, what happens. So this is what they also call that the, the, the code is the law here. There is no way to stop it, the transaction. Because once again, if you want to stop the transaction, means that you need to uh, you need to interfere the entire network, not in a single computer. So that's uh, that's very powerful also. So what what are these cryptocurrencies at the end of the day? Uh, so essentially, the definition that they put to, to this uh, is that it's a digital asset designed to work as a medium of exchange. So what I mean is that, and the digital here is very important. We already know this. Is, there is no equivalent in the real world to this coin. So there is the, the, they only exist in, the comp in a computer, okay? Or in several computers in this case. The crypto part come from the fact that they, are, they use a very strong 
cryptographic algorithms to make the transfer. So once again, when I mentioned to you that the person of, of the machine that have an account that in this world is called a wallet, essentially are attached to a number. And even when you can see the transaction between wallets, um, you cannot go into them and try to change it because they are uh, they are closed by, by cryptography. So by mathematics simply. <clears throat> that not only secure the transaction, but also controls the creation of more coins. That's another point, important point here. Many people will ask, okay, but this, if it, this is something that you just can create in a computer, what is stop you to do as many as you want? Essentially, you know, create millions and of, of these things. So this is also part of the network. So for example, in the case of, of the Bitcoins, there is a number, a maximum number of coins that will be forever so there is no way that people can produce more than 21 millions of bitcoin and this is again a property intrinsical of of this um, of this kind of network and that's that's very important because avoid the possibility to create infinite amount of, of coins making it obviously completely worthless like in the real world when you have a central bank that, pr that printed money money like crazy you know and, it's, and once again you can also verify the the, the ownership attached to a particular wallet, once again, not to the owner of the wallet. So there, there is typically, it doesn't exist in physical form. Um, and even more important, they, there is, they are not issued by any central authority. They are created by the, by the network. <clears throat> so how they work? So here is a, is a simplified, and sorry, I need to move from Windows here to see my own slides. Um, a simplified way of how to see this, this kind of uh, transaction. Essentially, what is start on the top, here on the top uh, <clears throat> left. So when a new transaction enter, it has to be transmitted to the network and are these different computers to essentially run some codes, some mathematics problem that we solve and we'll verify that the transaction is correct. Once again, what I mean is that the wallet, what is coming the transaction, or if you, I need to move one coin from one to another, the first one has enough money to do that or enough coins to do that. And the second one, for example, it really exists, no? things like this. So when these kind of conditions uh, are met by the entire network, so this kind of um, consensus, this, this, um, this mathematic problem essentially that they solve is a kind of proof of that this transaction is real, is also the weight how these coins are produced. And we can go deeper on that if you want to know what is called the, 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 the mining of these coins, but I, I didn't go into detail in this presentation. This, um, so essentially, one, the, the network is sure that the transaction can occur because all the conditions are met. A new block, so this is the part here at the bottom, is added to the change. So a new record, let's say, let's say this wallet sent to this other one, this amount, and this happened at this particular time, okay? And it's put into the chains, and essentially the transaction is complete. So this all happens without the interference or any, any, any intermediary here. <clears throat> yes. So one key point that is very important is that um, while blockchains is, can be very, very easily confused with, uh, with a cryptocurrency, they are not the same, okay? So you can attach to a blockchain different things, not only virtual coins, but also things that are in the real world. You know, you can uh, tokenize how they say things in the real world and put in this kind of network. And again, you can also put information like, you know, you do in a traditional uh, database. But um, the important point of this, of this slide, for example, is to, just to say that blockchain is different than the cryptocurrency in the sense that the cryptocurrency essentially sit on top of a blockchain, okay? <clears throat> So are they useful? That was the other point I put in the in, in our um, syllabus. So they are useful, yes, in many sense, uh, but one of the, the most important um, ideas of the use of these cryptocurrencies is something what is called a smart contracts. And, um, and you can see here this vending machine that is essentially most uh, one of the most simple way that you can imagine an smart contract. A smart contract is I put a coin, you know, one Swiss franc, two Swiss franc in this coin, in this machine, and the machine will give me one of the coke. So when the conditions are met, 
So if I put the right amount of money, the machine will give, and I push the, the button, the machine will give me the product that I want, okay? So, and of course, it's, a, it's also a transaction that is not reversible. You cannot essentially put back the Coke and pretend that the machine will give you back the two francs here. So this is, this is a, um, a simplification, but a very good example I found in terms of what a smart contract is. You are not dealing with any person here. You are dealing with the machine directly. You met the condition that the machine was programmed to do. And if you do it right, you get the product, basically. So you can imagine this very same concept in more complex situations. So um, in the same, for example, this, this figure showed two scenarios. One is right now when you have um, a, a typical example is to buy something in the real world. Once again, in, uh, <clears throat> for example, a house or a car. Um, in this case, in order to do such operation, you will have to deal with different um, three parties, essentially, maybe a bank, lawyers, insurance company, and to essentially pass that amount of money and get the asset to get the, the thing that you want to buy with this money, okay? In terms of the smart contracts, essentially, you remove all the, the, the people that is in the middle and you let the network to do the job. So essentially, it will be in code in a very similar way as it is in this machine, if you meet the conditions, again, if there is a property that is on sale in this network and you meet the condition, the network will, will solve this, let's say, will, will, will evaluate your proposal. And if everything is fine, will execute that for you. So there is no intermediary here that is essentially, if it's what they say here, the code is, is the law in this case, and it will be executed uh, automatically. This is also extremely useful if you imagine things in the future. So for example, uh, you can imagine insurance about some, uh, some things about climate, for example. Uh, I know some, for example, some, some insurance about certain conditions in your, in your farm. So, you know, some people who have some farms and essentially if, it's, you, if there is a certain amount of days with the temperature were over you know, 30 degrees for more than eight days, these are the kind of conditions that will trigger your insurance to pay you because you are dealing with this kind of uh, climate change uh, problems. But in terms of counting the days and you know wait that is happening and go to your insurance and claim that will be the network will, will be count. So essentially we will check, okay, if the last 10 days have been uh, a temperature over certain value, uh, these are the conditions to meet the contract, paid, to the to to the person who insured they have this insurance automatically without the 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 medium part. So I will not stop here, but I just want to give you uh, an idea that again is is um, we will touch much more in in the second part. That what are the different sectors, especially here in 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 the Swiss case. But again, it's just as an example, no no as an advertisement. But um, Switzerland in particular have a lot of industry that, that are working very hard to put uh, blockchains behind many products, not only in the private sector, but also even the government is, is working uh, to, to use this kind of technology for different things. So again, not only in terms of how to manage money, but how to do uh, quality control, how to be sure that something that we say is coming from a particular country, you know, a, a, uh, coffee or a particular cheese or a particular sculpture or, or a diamond is really coming from uh, from a, a trust party is really coming from a legal uh, activity this can be attached to a blockchain so you don't need to anymore have all this intermediary and very probably the 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 fault uh, um, or illegal activities between them <clears throat> So a couple of examples of, of can be these cryptocurrencies, you will hear, you for sure hear a lot before, is, is, is Bitcoin, for example. This, this coin was created or was invented, better say, in 2018, 2008 by an unknown person. In fact, we don't know who is the real author of this paper that you have on your right. And if you are really interested, you can, you can take a look at what it means. But they, they sign it as Satoshi Nakamoto. We really don't know if it is a person or a group of persons who essentially use that name and, and put the paper online. Um, after the paper, they really, they create for real, let's say the network, essentially convince many computers, many people, essentially with computers in this case, to install the software. And so the network can be, can be a reality since, or once a reality since 2009, and the people start to create these coins. Once again, in the particular case of Bitcoin, 
is um is one of these cryptocurrency the most famous one also the one that has more value right now in the in the market and one of the key points of this uh, particular coin is that cannot be created more than 21 millions of bitcoin so once the computers of the of this network reach the 21 million is not possible and in any conditions in the future to create more so this is um one of the reasons why they they put this kind of condition inside the the, the code that managed this is to avoid um the fact that once again if you create many of these you can essentially create inflation your your money will value less you no know? so to have a, a, a roof in this coin it was part of the of the design so um, again, one of the key points is that it's decentralized, so it's distributed to all these computers. There is no central bank, there is no central administrator, so there is no particular place where you create it and release it to the public. So it's created into the network. Um, can be sent to people into people one to one, so without the needs of, of uh, an intermediary. The transactions that verify the network, we already talked, we already mentioned this. Um, and at the same time, this network because uh, as I mentioned before, but this network were essentially volunteers who essentially put uh, the computers to work to uh, certify that the transactions are correct. And the system, what it does is say, okay, because you are helping the way that the network reward these people is to produce Bitcoins and give it to them. So this is the, this is the process of what you will, uh, you maybe heard before that is called mining, essentially. The people is mining Bitcoin, meaning solving these pro mathematical problems in their computer, that verify the transaction, and as a reward for that uh, job, they get some Bitcoins. Of course, at the beginning of the creation of the Bitcoins, it was very easy to create it. There were not so many network, uh, so many nodes, there was not too many people using it. So you, you maybe, even in our laptop, you can create a few Bitcoins, but because cannot be created more than 21 millions, the, 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 the difficulty of the way to create Bitcoin increase with time. So right now, in order to create one Bitcoin, you really need a lot of computers, uh, like a computer center to do it. And it's, in, and it's now impossible for a single person to create one of these. Again, this is because once this, is, this roof, the 20 million is reached, cannot be created more. The idea is that at some point the network will be paying in other form, like in fees, no, of, of, of what is the different transactions. So yes, right now, and uh, something that is important also is that this is a, a speculative instrument right now. If you see, and I will not go into the detail, but I guess uh, something that is interesting for you is to see that this kind of um, of product, let's say, are used by people who know how to deal with the stock markets, essentially, to make money. And um, <clears throat> so it's, it's very volatile. And this is the plot that they have here on the right. What I mean to say is right now, the, the expectation has, is that the prices of this asset, Bitcoin, essentially, will go up and down because it's, it's, it's not very difficult to, to manipulate, let's say, even if it's a, a, under legal circumstances, but it's still manipulate. <clears throat> because there are not too many. And when I say there is not too many, is the next slide I have here is essentially right now, and I, take, I took this screenshot just yesterday, in fact, today, but uh, with yesterday information, um, that it is almost 1 trillion of uh, American dollars, US dollars, uh, equivalent on Bitcoin right now. While, for example, if you compare this with the, the amount of gold in terms of the gold, obviously circulating to the markets is, more or less 20 times larger. Why I, I stop here uh, and this kind of information is because one of the things that have been very important for, for many people is to say, why you want to buy Bitcoin? What, what is the, uh, the appealing? So many people say, okay, it's because this kind of asset, even if it's not real, in the sense that you don't have an equivalent in the real world or something attached to that in the real world, it's still something that the people start to trust and if the people start to trust on these things, it will be what is called as a, a mean store of value. Yes, in the same way that you can imagine you do with gold. Essentially, the gold store value, especially when the the, the markets or the or the economy is not going well, people um, that is able to do it obviously can go for more safe um, 
instruments, in this case, for example, gold. So if people is imagined that the Bitcoin can be the, that equivalent to gold in the virtual world. But even when a trillion of US dollar sounds a lot, in terms of the market, it's still a small number. And um, <clears throat> so that means that it's very easy that, uh, that events like a news, like a, a, a billionaire making a statement on Twitter or something like that, similar like that can make the price go up and down. Once, I mean, at least in theory, the idea is that if the price continue increasing, such volatility in fact go down because it start to be more stable. <clears throat> the other thing that, uh, oh, sorry, the other coin that is very famous, in fact, is the second in terms of the, the market value after Bitcoin is called Ether. And Ether, Ethereum, they are um, two different things also. Uh, Ethereum is essentially a blockchain, a blockchain where the people can essentially put programs to run on top. So like this thing I mentioned just before that you can put into the blockchain a contract or a series of conditions, essentially an algorithm that say, okay, if this happened and that happened and this at the right time, do this. It's is essentially a, a, a computer program, yes? But you can attach this computer program to a, a, a contract. So Ethereum is a kind of blockchain where the people is, is building this kind of contracts, building this kind of application. The way to pay, let's say, the money inside this virtual world, if, I, if you can imagine Ethereum as a, as a video game where you have to go into, the money to pay inside Ethereum is called Ether. And um, so this is the, the difference between the world, but essentially here, Ether will be the, the cryptocurrency or the platform. You may ask, okay, so if you are telling me this, how is the name of the Bitcoin blockchain? Um, uh, for good or for bad, both are called the same. Bitcoin is the name of the blockchain and Bitcoin is the name of the coin also. Here is have two different names. <clears throat> so, um, as I mentioned before, uh, the Ether is the, the native currency in Ethereum. It's not the only one. You can use other cryptocurrency inside Ethereum, but uh, again, I don't want to um, go into the detail unless you have question, but essentially that's, that's the idea. Um, uh, we'll be more about this in the second class, but essentially what is happening is that you can write uh, or you can have application on top of the Ethereum. And this is exactly what it, many of these uh, companies here in Switzerland and many other places are doing, creating application that runs on Ethereum and, um, and execute products and sell products to people and also to other companies. So, the, so in, what is the promise of, of, this, um, of this network essentially? Is, uh, essentially is a kind of banking for everyone. And this is a screenshot of their, their own Ethereum web page. So this is why I put here like a, a promise, no? But one of the key uh, things that have been very, very popular also in this kind of application is that you can imagine, we, for example, live here in a country where it's very common to just go in a bank and, and open a bank account, but it's still a lot of places in the world that that's essentially impossible. But still access to internet is much easier than to have access to electricity or, or to have access to the banking system, for example. So what is happening right now is imagine the idea of, because you can send money to people without having a central authority, a bank, for example, this can allow people who is right now outside the banking system to get money from others, as simple as that, no? <clears throat> also, you can do this kind of transaction without the bank. So it's, it's, it's very powerful if you imagine in terms of sending money around the world. It gives you more privacy that once again can be used for good, can be used for bad, but it's a property of the system. It can be sent people to people, a censorship resistant. So again, no, no, no all this privacy uh, brings uh, um, criminal activity, but also very good things like uh, you can uh, help people that are living right now in certain countries, in certain places of the world where authorities are um, um, put a lot of let's say, um, barriers to, for the normal people to have this kind of, of thing, like essentially to get access to money that people are just living from outside. Um, and it's, the idea is that essentially the people can interact with them without all these, all these difficulties. So again, I, I was trying to, to go in fast to try to give you these concepts and, uh, and hopefully trigger at least uh, a few questions for you. Um, so this is basically the end of the, of the presentation. 
Um, I have also a very last video after I was thinking, I will not show you today, but I will leave you there because I leave you the link. Don't worry. Um, I think it's fun, but it's a, it's a video from the uh, program in the US. Uh, just the, only, the, only, the only warning is that usually John Oliver has a language that maybe is not suitable for all the audience, but I think it summarized also in a, in a funny and, a, and different way what these things are, you know, as the traditional tutorial in YouTube or, or me telling you this in right now. So, yes, again, I don't know if you have any, any question or something that you heard around and you would like to, to crock shed. I stop talking right now. <laughs> so you said it could be 21 million uh, bitcoins. Uh, do, you, do we know how many uh, there are now? Um, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's already surpassed the 14 million. OK. Um, but there is a, we, what is possible to know is exactly when we reach the 25, the 21, sorry. And this will be, if I remember the year correctly, in 2044. Because again, every time it's more and more difficult because the idea is that the supply is constant. So if you have more parties trying to do the coin, the system just make it more difficult. So the amount of coin produced is still more or less constant, sorry. So it, because there will be more buyers, I think, because uh, there are more and more parties interested. I mean, Goldman Sachs set up a, a structure, yeah. so there will be probably more buyers. Yes, exactly. So, for example, right now you have really entire computer center, you know, like almost the same size as, uh, as a Google's computer center, just for this, just to mine Bitcoin. So, because now, again, it's impossible for a normal person to do this. Uh, the, the difficulty is more higher than 10 years ago or five years ago. So, every year it's produced a few hundred thousands. And, and so the supply is constant. And so, yes, as you said, if more people will come in to produce these things, it will be even more difficult. But this is by design. But who can produce that then? Because it means it can only be a big high tech, uh, IT tech companies or... Yes, exactly. But imagine that for some reason, you know, I don't know, you get uh, one of these laboratories to put all the computers to work. It's not like uh, they will do faster. Essentially, the, the system will recognize that you have a new entity trying to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. And it put more difficult, make it more difficult for, for everybody. So, okay. the, so it will not, it's, there is no way to accelerate the process. See what I mean to say? It's impossible to accelerate it. Um, maybe one note I can say here is that Bitcoin, Bitcoin, sorry, has a, a top number. Ethereum doesn't, or Ether doesn't have a, a, a maximum. The, there is a, a different philosophy here. But sorry, I don't know if you have any other question. Yeah, I do. It's my, my name's Steve. Just to say thank you very much for a, a, an amazing uh, presentation. Quick question on the volatility of Bitcoin. And, uh, do, you, do you see over time it becoming less volatile? Or, or what, what's your view um, in, on the volatility? Or we always will have this always? Or is, is there, are we just interested to get your view? Um, yeah, what, what I understood is once uh, there is not two scenarios, there are many, but let's say the two extreme is that um, everybody forget about this. And you know, who, who was possible to sell these things now will get some money back and the rest of, of the people will essentially lose all. And this will be a story to tell in, you know, in, a, in the book stories. Or essentially what is more probably that this happened right now is that more institutional money. So again, large banks and uh, private companies and maybe some, even some, how do you call these? Um, uh, uh, oh my God, I forgot the, the word, like uh, the found by countries, a uh, sovereign fund will start to put money on this that may, once the price going up and that may more difficult that something or someone can make this bump and up. So at, again, it's impossible to say what will happen, but if, if we want to, uh, sorry, if we see a little bit the news the idea that more money from uh, big large uh, institutions and in different forms will buy more of these assets because there is no way to produce more quicker 
they essentially increase the price. So this 1, 000, 1 trillion will be maybe two, three trillions, and these bumps and downs will be less frequent or less deep, sorry. Maybe not less frequent, but less, less dramatic. Essentially something more like a, uh, like a normal, but normal, you know, nothing today is normal, but uh, uh, more soft as a stock market right now. That is the line here in blue, for example. Right, well, that's great, thank you, that's good. Um, uh, yeah, how about uh, regular, uh, like, how is it regulated? What, uh, what, what is the security for, for this? Like, is there any regulation or any body regulating? The yeah, well, that will depend a lot of the jurisdiction. So this is why, for example, in the in my second part, I will try to deal with, let's say, for what oh, I need to go back a lot. Um, that is this part of the review or material because again, review of the legal aspect of the usage and the holding also. Try to reply to your question. For example, um, in the U.S., that is one of the largest markets for all these, um, is something legal? In fact. Uh, in terms of the, the, the agency in the United States that deal with the taxes, this is considered an asset. So this is considered a thing that you own, no? and the same thing that you have a house or a car. So it's something that they are taxing, in fact, already for, for if you hold this. It's happening also in Europe and uh, um, in the UK, I know this is the case. And here, in the case of Switzerland, yes, it's something that you can also uh, even, uh, uh, sorry, sometimes I forgot the words, but some kind uh, of legal transaction with this. So you can really sell and buy in a normal way. In fact, you can buy with Bitcoins in the SBB machines, in the train machines here in Switzerland. Wow. Maybe not at the best uh, <laughs> exchange rate, obviously, but uh, it's something that you can already do since uh, I think four or five years ago or something like that. Have it very quiet, but you can essentially get Bitcoins in your SBB. Of, obviously, there is a lot of things uh, in terms of how this will be, because I think that your question also comes in the form of what happens if AI own one of these things, and and the the for example the place where I am holding it because maybe it's not your cell phone, but it's a company who is doing it for you. That is the most common way to to get a wallet, in some way disappear or get hacked, you know, and somebody steal all the coins. Uh, that's the part that's still in the in a gray area because essentially we say okay we you know what's your responsibility to get these things and uh, we cannot do anything about it um also something that is very important to to know about bitcoin is that when they are they are also safe in wallets and if there is no if somebody forget the password of the wallet and that happened in the past there is it's just literally impossible to recover it so if it's somebody essentially can even have a company put your money there and close the door. And even if you put the person in jail, if it, and if it's really like, it's a real case right now, a person is in jail and he will not give the password and it's no other way, say so he's mine to get it back. So, so if a hacker can take away the Bitcoin, who, who is the police to... Uh... Like, yes, exactly. That that's something that is still not very clear, and it will depends a lot of country by country, essentially at this at this point. Okay. okay. So the the idea is that, uh, and again, this is more about the, the the next Wednesday. But there is two ways to save this thing. One is you can save it in your phone or in a computer or in a pen drive. So if that's the case, nobody can get your coins unless this person go into your house and take the pen drive from you. Yes, because they, you can, even when they live only in the virtual world, you can extract it from the network. So this is a very nice property also. You can save a Bitcoin right now, in um, even in, in a piece of paper, because it can be saved as a QR code. And I put in an envelope and open in 10 years and put it back in the network, I will work. And if that coin is printed in your piece of paper, there is absolutely no way to, to get hacked either. Thank so the, the dangerous here is when, again, when you, or not the danger, let's say, the possibility to get hacked means, sorry, happen if he, this kind of coin are safe in a, in a entity like a Coinbase, no? that is a very famous uh, company that will be very soon in the stock market in the US, or any other company, Switzerland also have many of these uh, intermediaries, essentially, you go there and you put your credit card and get some Bitcoins and you see your, you know, your things in your phone, but the coins are living there. 
So you can always take it with you. Uh, and it, take it with you means put it in an a offline place. And there, it, again, and, and unless somebody knows that you have this pen drive and take it from you, there is no way to, to take that money from you. Thank you. So yes, again, the idea of this, of this second part also was going through the whole ton of these details, like uh, what this means as a wallet, because I think it's very important, essentially, some people want to save these things for years. No? They say, okay, I will I'll do my bet, and I don't want it to have it in one of these platforms. You can really take it out of the system and put it in your, in, in, in your house. Um, have been cases also of people who did exactly that 10 years ago, and now they... They throw the computer or they don't know where is the hard drive or they don't know the password again. And, and, and it's just right now impossible to, to get access to this. So that's the, it's a good thing, but also uh, you have to be careful where you put it. So yes, that's, um, I don't know if you have any, any other question. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. I have another question. Um, I'm sorry, I was in, but I world and um, I don't know, maybe you have heard the hype in the art world about the NFT. Uh, that, for example, Christie's the auction house is selling tomorrow on digital artwork, and it will be uh, paid by NFT, the non uh, fungible token. Can you say something about this difference? You know, or I I think is so. It out of your. I mean, I can tell you what I understood story. about it. So, uh, <laughs> no, no, sure, sure. sure. Yeah, can... that would be great. I mean, what is what is this kind of new form of art? Essentially, people who is making this kind of draw or just digital painting uh, in a similar way that you will do a paint, you know, in the real world with the canvas and your paint and uh, your colors, <laughs> your paint. Um, there is now this kind of uh, new way to create art that will be attached. Sorry, will be safe in a blockchain. So the value and why some of these art or painting are sold so so high prices i know the last one was something like a 300 uh, ethereum that will be something at that time was essentially 600,000 us dollar or maybe a little bit less now um is because essentially is in terms of the art it met several things that is is unique so it's different to have that particular file let's say that to have a screenshot of that painting because say okay it's essentially the same but this, as you said, is to have the, your Joconda in the museum or to have a copy there. The way that we know that the real Joconda is uh, in the Louvre in Paris is because it's there, because somebody told us this is the real one, have been authenticated, and now is, you know, have a bunch of lasers and security, so it's very difficult to steal again. <laughs> While this is the, how you manage to do the exact, exactly same thing is that you attach this painting to a blockchain. So it's a unique way to identify that this was the masterpiece, that this was the, the opera prima, so the first one that was done. And there is no way to falsify this file, this painting. Mm -hmm. because it, it, So you can, again, there is people that give value also to that because they say, okay, I like the painting, but I also like the fact that today or in 10 years, I, I don't need an art certifier or some Christy signature behind of the canvas say, no, this is real or not, is attached to a blockchain. So everybody can know what is the, un the only one there. And this is the, the, the way that they are uh, getting so, so famous and getting this kind of uh, appreciation in the, in the value, the price. Yeah, like, I didn't look today, but last night, this digital file of the art in Beetle was already uh, almost 6 million US. Uh, no, uh, six million, but it should be paid in these non fungible token. And so I'm always wondering how this, or that's why I'm listening to how it will work because Christie's accept this as payment uh, tomorrow when well, uh, the auction clauses will close tomorrow. 
close tomorrow. Yes, essentially, uh, this this painting is living in uh, Ethereum blockchain. So yeah. what it will happen is that somebody who has the money, we have to buy the Ethereum and pay inside the blockchain for that uh, for that file, essentially for that piece of art there. Uh, so I guess that to be prepared, I, I just can imagine at this point, obviously I, I'm guessing, but that the, the Christie's essentially have maybe 10 millions or 20 millions already on Ethereum in a wallet. Mm -hmm. And when somebody bet the maximum and say, okay, this is yours. And you, you know, give me the money in my real world bank account and I get it for you in this virtual place. Okay. So the, I, uh, once again, it's an investment for many people because you can imagine that because it's very easy now to authenticate it. You just take it with you, whoever you are. And in 10 years, you just send it to somebody. And this transaction, once again, is unique. Or you can sell it privately also to another person for, for well, the amount that you agree. And um, in that will be uh, associated to the new wallet, so the new owner. And it's no way to, to make two of these. So that's the, the value of, uh, from my point of view. There is no, uh, really, it's almost impossible to do to a copy. Yeah. And apparently they will, if it will be ever sold again to, some, to somebody else, then the artist or, uh, each time receives 10% of the new uh, price uh, paid, which is a uh, novelty in the art world completely, because especially if that's why digital artists are celebrating this new way of mm. uh, selling digital art. Well, again, you, yes, you get you go to the. Sorry. No, then they participate yeah. still in further sales if this uh, file or digital artwork is sold again, which is great for them because then uh, they still earn money. Exactly, and and again. In this case, I guess the movement for this uh, uh, audition house, the Christie's, okay, we need to get into this right now. Because if you notice, uh, now the artist does not need these people to do the transaction. So if you, jo yeah. if you have somebody who really has the money, you just say, this is my wallet, and it's a, you know, a very long uh, string of numbers and letters, and she or he can send it to you without the need of this place, uh, this uh, traditional way to do it. So I guess it's some of the ways that, that they are doing like this is maybe they convince the person, say, come to us, let's do it like in a, in a, in a Christie style, you know, with the guys and the, and the palace, maybe in a virtual way, because they cannot be in the same no, room. No, it's maybe. only online. Exactly. It's only online. <laughs> but uh, I guess it's more a, a, a screen that say, hey, we need to go this, because if we, we just uh, stay uh, on the sidewalk, uh, they will not need us anymore to do this because again yeah. we don't need them to authenticate it that is the key yeah, point of I, all this yeah exactly okay but why it's called non-fungible token and not bitcoin or something like that do you know this why john I, I i didn't hear sorry the first part why it's called sorry I said the the NFT why or why is this kind of payment called non fungible token mm -hmm. and not Bitcoin? Sorry, silly question. Yes, so, so uh, this is what I was saying. Over this is what I was Do saying. You know maybe. Yes, I was trying to find the, um, what it is, sorry, here, here. maybe it's not the best explanation, but what I say is that, is that uh, a blockchain is not only work for cryptocurrency, you can essentially attach anything to this, so can even do okay. this kind of virtual art, so essentially what is happening is that you assign this file to a blockchain in the sense that it's unique, there is no way to copy, there is a only way, only one person is the owner of this particular piece, uh, in the similar way that uh, Bitcoin are on, you know, one coin to one person, half of the coin to other person. Um, but it's, it's not, and doesn't need to be a cryptocurrency. But this important point is, it's attached to a blockchain that ensures authenticity and the uniqueness of the piece. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. Very no. interesting. No, thanks for asking. I suppose there is a challenge in terms of uh, interoperability for the future as well, but that may be something you will touch upon next week. Huh? Uh, can, can you repeat? Sorry. A challenge um, there? Is there an interest in, in those um, cryptocurrencies to uh, exchange together and to get some, uh, and also those, those blockchains to be interoperable? Mm. Yes, yes. In fact, it's, it's, that's something that companies are working a lot. How to make the, the transactions uh, between networks, yes. Because right now, what you do is that um, there are, they say, the two ways right now. One is, for example, you live in Ethereum. As I mentioned before, Ethereum is a blockchain and you have to have Ether, but not only. You can have other kinds of cryptocurrency in here. So you can essentially exchange Ether but to, for, um, I don't know another name, Cardan, or that is living in the same network essentially change one by another by the price of the market at that point. But Bitcoin does not live here, for example. No? So if you want to buy Ether, essentially um, what it will happen is that somebody will do that transaction for you. You go from this one to real money or fiat money, let's say, you don't call it real money, fiat money and the fiat money to Ethereum. So the idea is to avoid that, that uh, double, double um, exchange. Uh, obviously in platforms like Combay, you, you don't know this. Essentially, you say, okay, Bitcoins for this amount of Ether. And uh, for the user point of view, it's like you are doing one-to-one, -one, but it's, no, it's not really the case yet. For some of these, for example. I had a quick question. Last one, Steve. Steve. I, I saw some crazy coins being created, like Doggy Coin and things like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah what, what, what's going on, and what's your views on all this? Is it? Uh, I'm just interested. I just find that a bit uh, crazy. <laughs> well, so, so um, some of them are. It, it's important to mention, for example, some of them, uh, some of these logos, for just to give you an idea. Some of them are really coins, really in, real in the sense that. Uh, again, if you go to Ethereum as a network, as a, and I, again, the, the, the analogy that helped me is to try to go in a video game, no? in, a, in a virtual game. So there you, you can create a company and that company can issue their own coin. So I'm living in the Ethereum network. So essentially what it means is you can send it back. And if your product is good, if your, what you are doing has real value, uh, you can issue that kind of coin and, you know, the value will increase. Essentially, that's a very legitimate way inside the Ethereum. Others, like the one that you mentioned, Dogecoin, in fact, is, is, was created just for fun, just to uh, it, it, literally the person who put this code is essentially, you can copy the Bitcoin code and put it in another place and, and run it again under a different name. And the people just start to buy it. And that was the crazy thing. Like a, it was like an experiment to say people can buy everything. Okay, they can buy anything that you put in the market. And that was the uh, an an example of this kind of thing. So many people or people who understand this are trying to do the same. Sometimes the, the coin doesn't value anything, let's say. But if you find some market or some people that uh, that you convince and their social media or something that has some value that maybe they, they can start to put uh, fiat money there. But, um, but once again, many of these coins are coins issued by a company inside Ethereum network and they are real coins in the sense that do something. And if the company again is doing something real, uh, the value is legitimate to go up. And others are essentially copies of, of, of you know, uh, smart people in a, in, a, in, in a living room who say, okay, whoever we can cash with this and, and and sell it all when, when I have a decent amount of price and, and just let the coin die alone. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, it has to be kind of careful, but usually the, 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 they say the cap market for this one are, uh, I would say only a few dozens of millions or you know, something like that. Okay, thanks. And, uh, okay. Oh, it's 10, 7, 12. So thank you guys for the, for the interest and to be there yet. Um, again, I, I invite you to, to, to come out next Wednesday. We can, I can show you the rest of the material and hopefully have more, more conversation, more questions.
Definitely. Thank you very much. This was very nice interesting. Time. Have a nice thank evening. You. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Really enjoyed it. Really. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Great. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.